it definitely postponed the possibility of an imminent invasion of Essequibo by Venezuela. I think, Kit, that adjective imminent denotes that if there wasn't for Argyle, there would have been an invasion of Essequibo. Am I right or wrong in that interpretation? I think you're probably right. I mean, we didn't know for certain, of course, that Maduro would cross the border, but all the signs pointed in that direction. And I believe that that was why Lula, who really is responsible for having prompted and pushed for the Argyle uh, meeting, uh, was convinced enough to do so. Lula, of course, has long been a friend, if not supporter, of Maduro. I'm not so sure that that is the case as we speak, but I would say that um, there's no certainty that Maduro would have crossed the border, but there was every uh, likelihood that he would. Maduro has violated just about every other clause in this agreement and has dishonored it. He honored this because he is afraid not of us. He's afraid of Brazil. He's afraid of his friend Lula. As President Ali pointed out at, at the General Assembly. This has been part of our history for 58 years, mm -hmm. from the time of the 18, 1899 award. It hotted up uh, immediately prior to becoming independent, which led to the Geneva Agreement. Uh, and the parallels between the Geneva Agreement and the Argyle as, uh, are quite extraordinary, actually. The ultimate solution to it has always been in the hands of the United Nations, um, was it General Secretary, right? General Assembly. No, the, oh, oh, the, the person you mean, yeah, yeah, yeah the General Secretary. Yeah. He was assigned the ultimate, or that person mm -hmm. was assigned the, the ultimate responsibility which he exercised and sent it to the ICJ. We have, in my view, quite properly agreed to that. And we have put our faith online by saying we will honor that agreement, whatever the ICJ rules um, on, on the efficacy of the 1899 award. Dr. Gonzalez had said that uh, Maduro is better for Guyana than the opposition. Can you go into that a little? Um, how, how, how you um, view such a statement and, and um, g give us some reasons for, for why you think what you think? Well, I think it's fairly simple. Uh, as I pointed out in the letter, the leader of the Venezuelan uh, opposition, the real leader, mm -hmm is uh, the lady, uh, her name escapes me at the moment. Maria Corina right. Machado. Machado. Machado has made it very clear. And she's the first Venezuelan leading politician that has. She thinks it is correct that the matter should be addressed by the ICJ. Um, why would... Maduro facing international sanctions, facing even third world resentment of trying to bully a small country. Why did he do that? He, must, he cannot be that stupid not to know. If he was involved in a big country that has a big powerful army, but uh, the third world, the global south, would surely frown on a, a country with the third largest army in South America, trying to bully a country with less than a million people. What, what was he thinking? I mean, 
in international relations, you don't do something as silly as that. And on the border Freddy, is the most powerful military. You ask me to get into the mind of a madman. Maduro is not sane. He's not politically sane, in my view. He's a desperate man, and desperate people do desperate things. You can't predict what they're going to do. So what we need to do is to be prepared for the worst that he might do, which, of course, is to attempt to seize the Esequibo by military force. And I believe that our president, Ali, has taken all of the right steps in that direction. And to give credit to the opposition, they have uh, aligned themselves and supported him in this regard. Mm -hmm. we, were, we were united on, on the threat that came from uh, Suriname, which actually has not yet disappeared. And we were united against the very real threat that comes from Venezuela. But remember this too, that every Venezuelan, this is where we are making errors, every Venezuelan from all, almost from cradle to grave has been taught to believe that they have been robbed of the Esequibo, hmm. that it belongs to Venezuela, that it was given away by a conspiracy to Guyana, uh, but what was then British Guyana. Um, and we have not yet educated our own people to understand the importance of that and the threat of it. That is what I am currently attempting to do now when I said I was involved. We need to make this issue of Venezuela a critical and important part of our school's curriculum. And it is not so, as yet. Mm.